Hey YouTube, I am Leo with Remodeling Calculator and in this video I want to talk to you about the efficiency, the heating efficiency of this ductless mini split heat pump, how well it heats the house and how much energy it uses and ultimately how much it costs. All right, so to get the basics out of the way, this is a single zone, uh, 9000 BTU, that's for cooling and up to 22,000 BTUs for heating. It's a Fujitsu and it's a, one of the newer model, the 33 seer. I'll put that in the description, but you can probably see the model over there anyway so um, right now it is set for 80 degrees um, the reason I set it higher than the desired temperature is because it's sitting up top and the temperature sensor inside this unit is also located on the top now as we learned in the history class and in the physics class the heat rises therefore it's warmer up at the top than down below all right so I have it set for 80 degrees now if we walk to the other side of the house or of this space so here's my thermostat and it is showing 72 degrees inside. Now, see, it's not blowing directly at the thermostat. This is kind of on the opposite end of the space. And basically, it's heating this whole entire space by itself. Now, I do have a furnace. And I'll show you that I haven't run that furnace the whole season. Um, this space is about 800 square feet. And now, not only that it hits this space here, it also hits the upstairs. So the two rooms upstairs. One over there, one over there, it also hits them. Uh, all right, so let me show you how much power it uses and I'll explain things to you as we go. So here I have my Emporia app and this is a power monitoring system that uh, uses individual clamps for each individual, individual circuit. And this is how much power this thing is using right now. Now, this is on a minute chart and as, as you can see, over here it went into defrost mode. By the way, if you wanna see what the defrost mode is and how it works, check the link to the video I just made below. As you can see, on this chart, it went into defrost mode and then it cycled up. It ran at a, at 2400 watts for about 10 minutes. Okay. So, and this is the maximum power draw it will ever, ever do. I've never seen it go over 2400 watts. And then it stabilized and it's running at about 1300 watts right now. You can see right there. Okay. And if we keep scrolling over here, it was running at, uh, like 1200 watts, 1300 watts, even lower at about 800 watts when it was sunny out. So again, the temperature right now is about 37 degrees. It was about 40 degrees this morning, and then it dropped, the sun went away. So it, when it was 40 outside, it was running like at eight, 900 watts, okay? So let's go into the night. And so you see another uh, defrost cycle. So we are at about 10 a.m. If we keep going back to the night, it was like 24 degrees outside. So it was running more closer to like 2000 watts. After the defrost cycle, it would run at 2400 watts for a little bit longer, but then like settled closer to 18, 1900 watts. And if we look on the hour chart, we can see actually overall it's probably using around maximum of 1.8, 1.9 kilowatts. Okay. So this is uh, during the night when it's 22 degrees outside, 24 degrees outside. All right. Just so these numbers make sense for you, I've set up this space heater. You know, this is your regular. $40 space heater that you can buy at Home Depot, it's electric, and we plug it into this uh, power station. And let me just show you how much power it uses to run. Again, so right now we're using, on a minute chart, we're using 1300 watts, all right? Let me turn this thing on. So I have it on maximum setting. And as you can see, it's using 1460 watts. So this is rated, this is your typical 1500 watt space heater. I don't know where the faceplate is on this. It actually has a tipping protection, so it will shut off. So yeah, you can see 1500 watt rating right there. And when it's on, it's running at 1450, 1460. Okay, so if we put the heat on slightly lower, it's at 1275, but to get most heat out of it, you put it on high and this on maximum and you get 1450 watts okay and uh i'll get a little bit into the numbers in here but again 1300 watts over there about 15 1600 watts on average so like this is the average 1500 watts so there these two units this one and that one use about the same amount of electricity to hit your house okay so this so while they use the same amount of electricity to heat the house, this mini split heat pump hits 800 square feet downstairs 
and another room upstairs about 200 square feet. Now, this space heater, this little electric heater, it is probably good for about 200 square foot room. You know, if you run it continuously, you will keep it at 70, 73 degrees. Depends on the outside temperature, depends on the insulation and whatnot. Uh, but <coughs> this one heats almost a thousand square feet. So it provides four to five times more heat than the space heater. And the way it works, um, basically, min mini split heat pumps, they don't generate resistive heat. So what is resistive heat? You can see those little coils, electricity passes through them, they heat up, and the fan blows that heat through. Now, the way they work, the way the mini splits work, is they use refrigerant gas. Anyway, it's a refrigerant gas that uh, extracts the heat from the outdoor air, and I can go into depth on that topic in a separate video, but basically, they, uh, the outdoor compressor compresses the hot gas, and it goes through the coil here, and so the coil gets warm, and then the blower motor blows the heat inside the house. And then the gas circulates and picks up more heat from the outdoors and brings it inside. Now, you may think, like, if it's below freezing outside, how can it bring the heat in? And uh, in a nutshell, the boiling point or where the R R410A refrigerant turns from gas to liquid and back is minus 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's, let's say, 35 degrees outside, which is about the temperature right now, you have a delta T or range of temperature of 80 degrees that it can extract from the outdoor air. Actually, 90 degrees. Yeah, 90 degrees of heat that it can extract from the outdoors and bring it inside. So that's why this mini split heat pump is a lot more efficient. Now there is a, such a measurement called COP or coefficient of efficiency, and this one comes with about four or more. Now I'm going to bring the the book, the specs book, and show you. But basically, it generates four times more heat per watt or per kilowatt or any unit of electricity than the space heater over here, which generates a one COP. Okay, so let's jump into numbers. This is an electric heater, so one kilowatt of electricity will output 3,512 BTUs. Let's call it 3,500, okay? So if that's four times more efficient, it will output 14,000 BTUs. So three and a half thousand versus 14,000 BTUs for one kilowatt of power. Okay, and so if we're using right now, let's go on a minute chart, 1,300 watts, we can 1.3 times 4 times 3,500. So right now it's outputting <laughs> somewhere close to 18,000 BTUs. All right. Whereas on maximum, this one will output, so we divide this by 4, about 4,500 BTUs. So 18,000 versus 4,500. And that's why this unit here, can actually keep up with this 800 square foot space downstairs and even hit the room upstairs. Okay. Now, when it when it gets really cold, the efficiency drops slightly, and I have to bump up the temperature. Now, let me show you actually the temperature setting. Okay. So I have it set to 80 degrees, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Sometimes this works. Sometimes it gives me a glitch. But we're checking the temperature reading at the therm thermistor up on the unit at the top of the unit. So the set temperature is 80 degrees and the actual temperature up there is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Over here we have 72 degrees in the space and 37 degrees outside. If we crank it up, let's put it on high. So what high fan speed does essentially is it removes more heat because the fan blows faster. Therefore, the compressor outdoors has to work a little bit harder to bring more hot refrigerant inside the house. So it increases the heat output and the fan blows it faster. So it's it's not just the fan, but the compressor also has to work a little bit harder to bring more heat inside the room. And we can look at the Emporia app again. Actually, yes, yeah, so you can see the change already happening. The wattage is going up, so the compressor is ramping up. The fan doesn't really take that much power, uh, maybe like 20, 30 watts. So it's the compressor that's ramping up. It will probably settle somewhere around 1800 watts for now because it's pretty warm outside, but let's not waste time on it. All right, so now let's take a look at how much it actually costs to run this ductless heat pump. So first, in my Emporia app, I can actually set my cost of electricity. Hopefully you can see this well. Um, but anyway, so this is in cents per kilowatt, and currently I am paying about 32.6 cents per kilowatt. Okay, now this is very expensive electricity. 
because there are some places in the, in the United States where you can actually get electricity for less than 10 cents. Some even get it for like 7, 8 cents. Um, anyway, so we set the utility rate. And now let's go into this unit. And we will look at units of measurement. Instead of kilowatts, let's look at dollars. Okay, so right now it's costing me about 36 cents per hour. 37 cents per hour to run. But let's look at monthly. Okay, so so last month, which was December, it was $281 to run this unit for heating. Now, again, my electricity is very expensive, and I'll tell you how it's actually not correct, um, but that's slightly um, outside of the scope of this. And uh, we're looking at last year, so February was like $224, but I think it remembers the old rate. Now, let's see. So the current... US average to look on our website. Um, I'll link this. This is the cost of heating calculator. Now it, it uh, calculates cost of heating in different states. So right now it uh, detected that I'm in Massachusetts. All right. And it says that the best thing is natural gas. But if we look at, at other fuels, so electric baseboard would cost you like $9,000 for the whole season, whereas the heat pump would cost you $3,200 for, for the whole season. And uh, I will actually make a separate video about this calculator. I think I already made it. I'm gonna, yeah, I did, so I'm gonna link it in the description below. But basically, if we look, so this is my rate, 324, 30, 32.4 cents per kilowatt hour in Massachusetts, and national average is 16.3. Okay, and this data is from US Department of Energy. Now, if we go back to the uh, Emporia app and we change the utility rate to 16.3, this is US average, okay, and we go. Back over here. So last month would actually cost me $140. And then if the utility rate was, say, 10 cents, if you live somewhere in, like, Illinois, it would cost you about $100 a month to run this thing. Now, again, I'm in Massachusetts, so electricity here is very expensive. If you're in California, your electricity is also very expensive, but it's warmer. <laughs> so you don't have to uh, use as much electricity for heating. Now, New Jersey, also expensive, but again, a little bit warmer than Massachusetts. All right, now, um, just basically... To tell you that actually I don't pay $280 to run this particular unit for heating, um, I actually have solar panels. <laughs> and my solar panels, um, they generate electricity for me throughout the year. Now, winter is actually uh, not that good. So what, what happens is in the winter, I actually use the credit that I generated in the summer. So uh, I haven't paid for electricity since I installed the solar panels a year ago. And I, I have about $750 credit left on the thing you can see I generated 16.7 uh, megawatts of electricity and if you look by months so this is my consumption this month you can see it's pretty high now this is not the only unit I have in my other part of the house I have another big unit that actually serves three rooms and uh, so that adds up to the consumption but if we look at different months let's say no like October I was net I was still generating more electricity than I was using now November I already started using like 400 kilowatt hours more than I generated. Uh, December was pretty cold and my deficit was about 1700 kilowatt hours. And right now it's about 1400 kilowatt hours deficit. But again, if we scroll through this, you can see now the overproduction is about uh, 750 kilowatt hours. Over here it's 1400 kilowatt hours. And this here, it was not set up correctly. Uh, uh, the meter wasn't measuring correctly. It was actually very small consumption and very high production, close to 2 kilowatts. So that's where my credit comes in. Um, basically, here in Massachusetts, using heat pumps without solar becomes kind of expensive. But with solar, like I said, I still have $750 credit on my account, which will last me all the way through like end of February. Then I will likely have maybe a $100 bill for February, March, and then it will go into net positive again. Now, the question is, who should get the heat pumps? Um, number one, if you live in a state with cheap electricity, you should definitely get a heat pump. Even if you don't have solar, your uh, your heating will be most likely cheaper than even natural gas. Never mind like oil, propane, etc. Okay. If you live in a state with expensive electricity, such as Massachusetts, uh, without solar, you probably shouldn't get heat pumps. Um, now they're great also for air conditioning. They're very efficient, much more efficient than um, your regular central AC, but they're also kind of costly and 
electricity here is so expensive that it just doesn't make sense to use even the very efficient heat pumps for uh, heating unless your only other option is basically oil which is very or propane uh, those two heating so uh, heating fuels are even more expensive than running heat pumps in the heating mode um, if you're somewhere where your electricity is kind of expensive but not that expensive um, you should probably still get the heat pump because again it's very efficient as far as air conditioning and uh, it's because it, each individual zone run, runs on its own let's say you are not in your bedroom most of the day you just shut off that room and uh, you don't waste any electricity or any heat whereas like your central system would heat the whole house and uh, it's kind of wasteful um, so the southern states it still gets cold over there sometimes but electricity is very inexpensive like in Carolina in Carolinas the, like on the southern uh, east, eastern US the electricity is probably like 11 12 cents per kilowatt hour which is one third of how much I pay and it's much warmer but you still get those cold days where you need the heat output so I would definitely go with the heat pump um, far north I would definitely have a backup system just in case you know your electricity gets shut down <laughs> so that's a downside with these things so if your power goes out you don't have heat so you should definitely have something like uh, you know backup generator and a furnace that can run from that backup generator or a boiler or even something like this uh, gas fireplace over here by the way um, I have a video that helps people diagnose why this gas fireplace would not light up um, I will link that in the description it's a pretty simple solution but anyway so if you have solar you definitely should get heat pumps um, solar is basically just amazing every which way around now in some states the the electricity is so cheap that your payback period would be pretty long in my case so I've installed my solar a year ago it would happen two years ago if Tesla didn't ditch me around for a year and then just basically say we're not gonna install it <laughs> the last moment um, but my payback period originally when electricity in Massachusetts was about 22 cents that's when I signed up for solar now it's 32 cents and it's going up to 40 plus 45 cents okay so it basically will double from the time I installed my solar panels so back then when it was 22 cents per kilowatt hour my payback period with uh, tax credits would be four years okay now that my electricity will be double the price now keep in mind I still need to heat my house together with electricity the price of gas went up and my gas furnace um, it's just insane to run it it's 30 years old I uh, have uninsulated ducts and basically I was losing half of the heat out the chimney and through the ducts so uh, it just didn't make sense to run the furnace but again with the price of electricity that we have right now my payback period will be about two years maybe maybe two and a half years okay now the way it works is uh, so I have my total uh, installed price which was about forty-one thousand dollars okay so then I get 26 percent tax credit on that so that's 11 grand so let's say it's 30 grand out of pocket and um, I'm basically making from the solar energy so renewable energy credits I make about 100 bucks a month 70 dollars in the winter 130 in the summer so average out 200 bucks a month for Rex so that's a that leaves us with about 28,500 that we need to pay back my heating bill for the furnace three years ago before I installed this heat pump was 660 dollars for one month okay and since then prices went up by 70 percent for natural gas so that would be about 1200 dollars a month right now okay so that was the coldest month but average it out to 800 dollars a month for, to run the furnace even 700 dollars a month for six months a year and that is 4200 dollars per year just to heat the house maybe even like closer to five thousand dollars so over three years that's 15 grand so we're left with thirteen thousand dollars now again i need to cool my house um the cooling the air conditioner and whatnot so basically i calculated at, at the at the new rate that um and eversource will institute in january they said they're raising it by about 40 percent on both distribution and generation so about two and a half years my solar panels will pay for themselves and i will have no electric bill i'll have free heating free air conditioning free lights and uh it's probably not enough to charge an electric vehicle but uh you know not having a heating bill is amazing and it is a combination of solar panels and the heat pumps now if i lived somewhere in illinois where electricity is about 11 cents per kilowatt hour i would just install the heat pumps and not even do the solar because the payback of 10 years is kind of questionable but two and a half years to pay back for the solar and then have everything all the heating and electricity for free is amazing and uh we keep it pretty warm we, like i think barack obama said you should set up your thermostat for 65 we set it for 80 <laughs> and uh, we get about 73 degrees on average inside the space 
So anyway, I'll, I'll actually make a separate video on the payback of the solar well. I'll, I'll crunch all the numbers. And, uh, but yeah, heat pumps are amazing. And not, right now it's only 37 degrees. I mean, not only, yeah, only 37. It's pretty warm. But we've had days, like the first, my first unit that I installed, two days later, the temperatures dropped to minus 10 degrees outside. Okay. And it was, I finally had half of my house warm because on the other side of the house over there, the for, it's an addition, an afterthought, and uh, they tried to tie it in with the ducts, but it was never getting above 55 degrees over there. So it was super cold. I had to run three of these things to just keep it warm over there. It was insane. My electric bill back then was crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so I finally got that side of the house warm by installing the first unit. Um, and now I have heat pumps. My whole house have, has heat pumps. Let me show you quickly. All right, so this is the bigger uh, unit that serves three zones. So this is the addition over here. It serves the addition, and uh, this is the one that we use primarily. The second zone, the one that, that we haven't turned on in a couple of months, is over there. It also comes from this unit over here. And the third zone is over there, basically the second floor of this addition. And that's primarily for air conditioning, because in the summer it gets super hot over there, and the cold air does not rise, it actually goes down, all right? So this unit here is for the room in the front of the house. This one here is the old system that I installed four years ago. I'm going to use it somewhere else or just sell it um, because I've replaced it with a, with this four zone. Now I'm actually, actually only using three zones over here. You see, this goes to the downstairs and this go to upstairs rooms. Again, this one goes to the room up front. This here is the one that's running right now. You see, this is the only one that's running right now. And this one is for the for the sunroom over here. We haven't turned it on in a while, because, uh, but it's basically air conditioning and heating, and we can actually use this room in the winter if we needed to. So as you can see, I have heat pumps covering my entire house now. And here are my solar panels that produce pretty much all of my electricity need for the year. And, uh, you know, once the, the spring is over, once we, I start generating the credit again, I, I'll be able to run the, the numbers for the whole year. But basically, <laughs> I don't have a heating bill. I don't have an electric bill. And it's because I am able to utilize the solar power together with heat pumps. So finally, the question is how much does it cost not to run it, but to have the heat pumps installed in your house? Um, if you're not handy, it will cost about three to four thousand dollars per zone. Okay. Um, if you live in a northern climate, I recommend extra low temperature heating or hyperheat models, which will add about uh, five to seven hundred dollars per zone. But what happens is when it gets really cold, like like I said, I've had temperatures minus ten, and this thing was kicking uh, the tuches. <laughs> it was keeping the house warm. But for that, you need the, the heat pumps that are designed to work in a very cold outdoor temperatures. Okay. Um, they, they're just, they have bigger coils. They have a uh, base pan heating element that removes the frost, removes the ice buildup. Uh, if that happens now, the regular models don't have any of those, uh, perks or, uh, you know, upgrades and they will not provide, provide as much heat. They will go into defrost cycles more often and whatnot. So if you, you're, no, you're getting it for heating. Get the um, the minus 13 or the minus 15 models from Fujitsu and Mitsubishi. Um, there is also LG Red, which is rated for minus 15 degrees. Um, I don't have much experience with LG. Um, there is also like Cooper and Hunter. They are basically made by Midea. Um, it's not a Japanese company now. Fujitsu and Mitsubishi are Japanese engineering. Midea is a Chinese company. They're much cheaper to buy. Um, so you would probably be saving about five to seven hundred dollars per zone even for the uh, the hyperheat models of Cooper and Hunter but I'm I don't have that much experience with them to tell you that they're very reliable whereas these things I, it, they basically run 24 7 3, uh, 365 because in the summer they're cooling in the winter they're heating the only time we shut them off is if we go somewhere or um, like a month or two a year when it's not cold enough and not hot enough where you don't really need when the temperature is kind of mild and normal and you don't really need to run them but we start running them in, the, in like september <laughs> when when the temperature at night gets like to 50 degrees it's already uncomfortable in the house so we start running them um it's they pretty much run 24 7 and the, the whole year and uh i've had several of this running I've, I've the first model the first unit i installed was four or five years ago i think it was four years ago and it ran continuously for four years 
So as I showed you outside, I've installed a bigger three zone unit. So I, I uh, took that apart, but not because it broke, but because I didn't need it anymore. Now, if you are somewhat handy, I actually have a bunch of tutorials on, uh, on my channel that show you how to install them. And I have about 20 more hours to upload of video footage to upload, uh, to show you every step of the installation of the heat pump. And basically there's a, there's a certain number of tools that you will need for this, but if you're planning to do a whole house with the heat pumps, it probably makes sense to buy the quality tools. You will spend maybe a thousand dollars on the tools, but then you'll save about ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on the installation. Because, um, let's say this unit right now costs two thousand dollars and to install it would be like forty five hundred dollars. So you save even on this unit alone, you would save about fifteen hundred dollars on the installation. If you bought the tools, bought, bought the unit and installed it yourself. Now, there's a caveat for this. Um, you're, you are not allowed to work with the refrigerants unless you have a EPA card, which is a um, energy protection agency. Um, so this is uh, the EPA card is 608. Uh, it's basically for HVAC technicians to work with refrigerants, but uh, you can actually get one. It's not that difficult. Uh, a lot of people just don't get it and they just work with it. It's kind of, you know, borderline you shouldn't because it's a uh, the fine for release of the refrigerant into the air is like forty-two thousand dollars. So keep that in mind if you decide to work without an EPA card. Um, and it's it's good training. You you will you will probably spend like a couple hundred dollars to get the training, and then you take the course uh, or the test, and uh, you are allowed to work with refrigerants. Um, I have a universal EPA, so I can work on commercial, on residential, even like on small appliances like refrigerators and uh, ice machines and whatnot. So um, yeah, but uh, if you're going to install it. Consider getting an EPA card. I am telling you that it's required by law. A lot of people don't, and they just, you know, they just buy the unit. They vacuum, uh, they, they connect everything, vacuum, pull, pull the vacuum, and open the, the the refrigerant is actually in the condenser unit outside. So you open the valve, it fills up the pipes. If you did everything correct, you never really uh, <laughs> release any gas. But um, it's better to have the EPA and the knowledge and um, on how it works. Definitely watch my videos on how to install it. This unit takes one day to install. Um, and that includes all the cutting, all the hanging. Now I'm pretty slow. It takes me a day and a half uh, because I do everything meticulously. <laughs> if you watch my videos, I just the support for the outdoor unit took me like a day to build. Okay, but basically, like you can hang this unit in one day uh, if you have the right tools. The tools, the good tools, will cost you about a thousand dollars. And then if you get a Cooper and Hunter, you can get it for fifteen hundred dollars. So for twenty five hundred dollars, you can have one zone, and then like you can do the whole house. Like I did, I, all, all of my systems I installed myself. So on the installation side, I saved, let's say you would pay like $2,500 per zone. I have one, two, three, four, five, five, six, six zones. So that's like $15,000 that I say. And that's, uh, that's conservative now with the post COVID, uh, price increases. It's probably more like $3,000 per zone for the, for the labor, for the installation. But these are Massachusetts prices. If you're like somewhere in the Midwest, it's probably closer to $2,000, but still it's a lot of money. So if you're handy, guys, I have all the videos that will show you how to install these things, uh, on my channel and there will be more uploads coming soon. So it's not that difficult. Um, uh, just I did my, I, I, I did my homework. I, I spent a lot of time selecting the proper unit, learning how to do it. The first unit I installed, actually the refrigerant part, I hired a guy, hired an HVAC guy, I paid him 300 bucks. He did the connections. And release the gas. I did the electrical. I did all the hanging, uh, but he he ran the pipes and released the gas. Uh, did the flare connections and released the gas. Three hundred dollars. That's the route he can take. He can pay somebody a couple hundred bucks to do the flare connections, make sure that the gas doesn't leak out, um, and he, they will bring the tools. So you will actually not need the <laughs> the vacuum pump. All the expensive tools that you need for HVAC, you will not need. So you can just like find an HVAC technician, just pay them to connect all the all the pipes in one day. Give them a thousand bucks. You know they'll be happy. And uh, you will save thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars installing this thing. Now, again, pretty much any southern state, uh, you should definitely get one of these because electricity down south is pretty inexpensive. In Florida, it's like 10 cents. In Carolinas, it's like nine, eight cents. I've seen people saying that they pay like seven cents a kilowatt hour. So seven. Now, just so you understand, it's almost five times less than I pay. And then next month, it will be like seven times less than I pay <laughs> for electricity. So you're almost... You don't even need solar. You can get solar for whatever reason, but um, that's a whole different topic. These things are amazing. Again, again, get the hyperheat model if you need it for heating. For air conditioning, they're all great. Um, they typically come in about 22 uh, sear 
uh, rating. Now your central AC, though it's probably 14, so you're already saving about 80%, uh, not 80%, about 40% less electricity you're using with a 24 seer um, heat pump versus a uh, 14 seer central AC. This thing is 33 seer, so <laughs> it's using about 40%, 60% less electricity for cooling. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, please like this video if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. I will link um, appropriate videos, um, the installation and uh, whatever else I promised, uh, the calculator, the heating cost calculator. I'll link it all in the description below. And uh, by the way, I just made a video. Um, so this here, the Ryobi power station. Just a <laughs> quick note um, how to charge the batteries on this Ryobi power, the 40 volt batteries with solar panels like this using this uh, boost charge controller, solar boost charge controller. So um, if you are in a grid down situation, you can still have power to run like your furnace or uh, something. Um, you can just take a battery out, charge it with solar panel, put it back in, the system is still running. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.